Igator, so the Majestic Rider. So today I'm on Sonny. He's a Rocky Mountain horse, and I posted a previous video of him when he was for sale. He was a consignment horse, which means I sold him for someone else. Uh, when he came in, he just trotted. He really didn't gate. We got him to gate, and he racked if you brought his head way up. So I know somebody taught him to do that. So he's much better now. He's getting there. He sold. The owners learned how to ride him, but sometimes his head goes up and down because he's not sure what he's supposed to do. So he fox trots, but he also racks a little bit. I'm trying to get him to carry his head neutral and stop messing around so much with his head. So I'm going to show you what he how he is now. This is his second month of training, but the owners also the new owners also been riding him. So sometimes it goes back and forth when that happens. But I want you to see how he goes with her and then how he goes with me, because of course I know gated horses a lot better than her. Because uh, this is going to be your first game course, so I can feel when he's changing and um, fix it a little bit quicker, but she'll get it in time. So I want you to watch closely. When he's doing the right thing, I'm going to push my arms just a little bit forward, but I'm always there ready to take contact and see in case he starts goofing around again, because he's kind of like a goofy gelding. So I want his head neutral. I don't want it way up in the air and I don't want it too low. He's on the trotty side, so if it gets too low, it's going to get more bouncy because he's going to go more towards a harder trot versus a box trot. If it goes too high, he'll rag, but he gets his head way up and that's not good for his back so uh, a nice saddle gate or racking gate is fine but um we want him to get, have him carry himself where he's rounding his back and using more so watch it again and see if you can see when i push my arms forward So overall, he's much, much better um, compared to what he was like in the beginning. I mean, him look pretty good in his video, um, but, you know, it took a couple of weeks and I didn't have video, I didn't take any video before that, which I should have, but I forgot. So what's he do that's bad? He throws his head back and forth, so I'm only releasing when his head's in neutral, which means kind of level. If it's too low, I kind of jab up on the rein, but then I let go or I release. Um, if it's too high, I hold. And then when it's good, I release. If he turns his head sideways, I pull with the opposite rein. So I'm always supporting. And when he's straight and doing the right thing, that's when I release. As he goes downhill, he doesn't know how to control his speed that well. He's got to really work up his top line and his back end to do it. So what his idea is, when I go downhill, I'll just run. 
because if I run down it, it's not as hard and I get down there and whatever. And the hard part with him is if you just pull when he speeds up, that doesn't work. A lot of them will just pull back on the bit. So what I do is every time I get to where I'm going the downhill, I sit back at my weight back to help them get my legs off, kind of push them forward, but I'm not squeezing or anything. And then as I'm going downhill, if I go to slow him down and he doesn't slow down, I kind of go like this with my hands and I get really tough with him. So I'm making it, hey, if you go down that fast, I'm going to make it very uncomfortable for you because you're making it uncomfortable for me. So that's the hard part. Some you can half halt and you can take and give and they will do it. And then some will do what he's doing. They'll just speed up. So even though you're pulling, they just pull against you and keep going. So you got to think, what else can I do to make it more uncomfortable? So that's what I'm doing with him. But your other option is every time you get to the downhill, you just come back to a flat walk and flat walk down it until they build up the muscles and they can hold themselves. So there's different options on how you do things. I might be able to do something that the new owner cannot. And so you come up with your own things. How can I get the message that he needs to go slower? Oh, I'll just come back to a walk and walk slowly down it. And then as he gets stronger and I become a better rider, then I can start going faster down it. So now I'll try again now that he's had a rest. The other thing he does too is her saddle kind of sits her uh, leg forward so her leg's kind of like that. And then he wants to turn around and play with her foot. But you'll see he won't touch my foot at all. And I'll try to leave it in the video. Um, before he tried to w go at it a little bit and I just immediately went like that. So I'm going to be a little bit quicker. My timing's going to be better. It should be if I'm a trainer. If it's not, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so now you'll see he just sits here and he doesn't do anything with me because the horse knows immediately who they can mess with, who they can't mess with. That's what, you know, they, that's how they survive is figuring out Watch as I go down through this area and see if you can see me get after him if he's getting too fast. And, you know, look for the things I said that I lean back the legs off and then I'm kind of uh, sliding my hands pretty fast and a little bit hard. The bit in his mouth is not hard. It's a level one miler. It's pretty mild, but he needs something a little bit more than a, a snapple because he does need to. In time, once he respects the um, bit and everything and listens really well, he might be able to go into a snapple Otherwise, he was good. That's where I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit on the downhill where he was trying to slow himself down. So he did figure out that if I don't slow down, Gay's going to get in my mouth. She's going to slide that bit. I don't like the way that feels. So I think I'll just go slower and do what she said. Uh, geldings can be a little bit easier to convince, but you might have to do it a thousand times till they figure it out because some of them are a little bit slower learners. But you got to figure out what works for your horse and um, how you can communicate to them. So he's much there than he was. I um, think he still needs work, but I think the owner will be able to do it. And she can send me videos if she's having problems because she's not uh, right nearby to us. Um, but I think in time they'll both get better. But the hard part when you're trying to do things with your horse is are they tolerating your mistakes and are you tolerating their mistakes? Because if they're not finished, they're going to make some mistakes and you're going to make some mistakes. And if they make mistakes and you make mistakes and you're both doing them at the same time, it just gets worse. And if he, they make a mistake and you don't make a mistake, you correct it, 
and then maybe you make a mistake later and they go, well, I'll let it slide because she let my mistake go, then it gets better. And over time, it just gets better and better and better. So some of the problems people having are the horse doesn't understand, it's miscommunication, it's too much rain, too much leg, or maybe not enough leg, and maybe not enough rain. And then sometimes it's holding too much, not releasing. Other times it's releasing too much and not holding. So all those things are the hard part where a trainer can see and help you or ride the horse and be able to feel how to get the things out of it. But remember, if you're alone, it's just better to stay slower, stay in an arena or somewhere until you're safe and you have it down pat. Um, he actually gates better on the trail than he does in here. And this is a round pen. It's pretty hard to ride in, in a 60 foot round pen when it's slanted, which ours is, because we're always going uphill or downhill. So we only get little parts where it's actually straight. And um, so that's the hard part when you're trying to get them to gate and you're learning is to deal with the terrain changing and not being able to stay in that gate because you have to keep doing things to help them since you know going uphill makes them trottier and downhill makes them pacier so you're doing things to try to help them out so see a couple of times you might have been watching his head and he looked around and he's like oh i really want to touch her foot i just want to touch her foot and he's like oh no i'm not going to touch her foot because he knows i'm a little bit mean and if he touches my foot i might jab it right in his face so again some of this stuff when you're working with the horses, sometimes you're just being too nice, and that's the problem. Some people are too mean, but I, that's much more rare that I see, especially with women. I usually see them being too nice, and then the horse takes over and scares them, and half the time the horses are really not that bad at all. It's just that they've taken over, and they've manipulated the person, and now the person is afraid of them. So be a little bit tough. Work on things. Uh, remember, you're going to learn from your failures. That's the only way to be successful. Try to be persistent, not give up, but get help. Get vi either video help or a trainer or somebody to help you get to your goal. Because doing it by yourself and having one bad day after another bad day and another bad day is just very hard. And I see people selling horses all the time. And when they call me up and they're like, yeah, so we bought four horses and none of them have worked out. I always say, it's not the horses. And they say, what? And I go, it's not the horses, it must be you guys. Because to buy four bad horses in a row is extremely difficult. And many bad horses can become good if you're doing the right thing. But I go, if you don't know what you're doing, every horse that comes is going to get barn sour or buddy sour or this or that, because they're all going to do something. And they're all, all the horses are about making their life easy. So if they can push your little button and make you scared, and then you don't want to take them out, they go, oh, that's great. Now I just get to sit here and eat. So of course, that's what they do, right? Yes, you guys are manipulators. They're very manipulative. So you have to make sure that you make them work and you get on their case and get after them. And then they're going to become uh, phenomenal horses over time. But it, it's a relationship. This isn't just a car. You can't just push the buttons. You got to work with them. You got to put time in. You got to put training in. And if you don't want to do that, then it's better to get an e-bike or motorcycle, ATV, something like that that's not going to think back but still can break and still needs tune-ups, right? But you're cuter, you're much cuter. And he's actually adorable, it's very funny. Okay, that's it for today.